Yo, what's up? My name is Caleb Pauls, and I'm going with Adventures and Missions to tell stories of South Sudanese refugees living in northern Uganda. Check it. Let's go. What were your expectations coming in? This is the first week. What were your expectations? To be honest, I don't know if I had expectations. What's this? It's my bag. It went all the way to Kenya and it made it here on a bunch of public buses. And... Well, it lasted, well, it lasted two days. We, uh, we made it about 25 minutes into our journey. What was that? And the carriage has come off the bottom of the van. Wait, is it still minutes? attached? Oh, it might have been more like 35, 40 minutes, but it was, was not it as long attached? as it, yeah, no, it hoped to have been. We hit the dirt at 10.30. It's 10.53, so we've made it 23 minutes. 23 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Dang. So it just like that full. Sue, so are you getting the shots? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> They're all really bumpy. Like, even those first couple weeks in Gainesville were really hard because I was, my mindset was like stuck. I didn't know quite why I was here, what's the purpose, why me, what is this project, where is the vision? It was just a lot of ambiguity and I was just having a rough time sorting that out. So we're on our second full day here living in dreamland. started to branch out into the communities and start to meet people. This first week is all about making connections, meeting people where they're at, uh, so we can kind of find out where the story is. And we're currently off to go walk to Greater Hope Primary School. It's a local school that was set up by the people around here. So today is our first kind of semi day for filming. A little earlier than we expected, but so we are gonna go do some quick little shoots. And meet all the teachers and the staff, because a lot of them are just women from the community. They weren't even trained to teach, but they decided they wanted to help out, so they decided to become teachers, which is really amazing. And they're changing this whole community, so we're gonna go meet them. We found out that one of the bigger issues in the refugee camps itself is education. Education helps a lot of the kids start up life again from going from one place to another <clears throat> having the uh, routine of school and just the value of education itself is something that's huge and once you can get kids to learn and move forward it's just the next giant step in a, for a community and this school is really the foundation for what that looks like but it kind of hit me um, the second night we were here in the bunk bed, like in the mosquito net. Like I've had a vision for this for a good seven years and totally forgot about it. The idea of coming to a place like this where there is such a need and a lack and people feel stuck and stagnant and we can see the problems, but I don't want to give band-aid solutions. I want to give tangible solutions that can propel people forward. I'm in desperate need of a haircut, so since they were cutting hair, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try to get this done. How are you feeling? To, to be honest, I think this is the nicest haircut I've gotten in a very long time, <laughs> and this is also the most hands on my head ever during one haircut. It's a really nice thing we don't have mirrors here. <laughs> so if they mess up, I'll never know. But you'll know. You'll get to see my face. Looks good. It does. <laughs> I hope you got all that. Hey, Robin. Getting his whole head shaking. Have you looked at it? How does it look? That one's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stand up, Caleb. Let's get the reveal. What do you think? 
Yeah? Yeah. It looks good. It's good? Oh, I'll get that. I'll do that. I can do that. <laughs> yeah? All good? Thank you. All right. All right. There we go. That was good. That was good. That's awesome. That was well needed. I won't need a haircut for a while now. But I will need a shower here soon. <laughs> I want to give tangible solutions that can propel people forward. And I can do that through storytelling now. I'm not just telling people and educating people. I can actually give people an experience to walk in someone else's shoes. And that's why I'm here. And that didn't occur to me till late. Like, we fundraised for this project for a good four months, and I still didn't have that why. Like, and I still pressed on. So when I have that, everything, like, clicked all at once. Too much going on. It was so good. The week was great? Yeah. It was really good. It was anything that I expected because I didn't have any expectations. What does this project look like? I have no clue. And we all come in with different ideas. Maybe it's all like a whole movie. Maybe it's episodes. Or maybe we have a call to action after every episode. Or maybe we have. We just don't know what we have. But in this week, we're not really searching for a format yet. We're just collecting stories, just throwing out the net and collecting things and then letting the dots kind of connect themselves. I don't feel rushed anymore to have a project. I feel like I can just take it in as it comes. And that feels really good. It's like God really did have my best intentions in mind. <laughs>